Good morning, Valerie here. Hey, how you going? Catching up with you this morning. Just pulled into work. Um, I wanted to tell you a personal story. Something that I'm brewing in my mind is about limiting beliefs that don't just um, keep you doing, taking small steps or small risks, but they also keep you small. And believe it or not, does add to the wear and tear. Uh, a, lot, a, a lot of times what we don't realize is that when it comes to pushing ourselves to the point of exhaustion, it's probably because we've got some limiting beliefs that are keeping us from doing things differently uh, because we have a view of ourselves that is small and so we keep ourselves in a very confined space. A couple of years ago, um, we had a, uh, um, my husband had a, a car accident that was actually pretty bad. It was sobering. Um, it was a miracle by the grace of God that he wasn't uh, severely hurt, uh, but the car was a complete write off. And that car was a, a small car, it was a used car, it was what we uh, could afford at the time, or what we thought we could, we, we could afford at the time. And uh, just out of nowhere, um, a car rammed into him. Um, it was so little, the car, our car was so little that it spun a few times. I don't know if it turned over, etc. but it was pretty bad and it was a complete write off. And uh, we replaced that car with another small car, <laughs> a tin can. Um, actually, it felt worse when the kids got into the car. They were like, we don't feel so safe in this car, mom. It's like, you know, it makes noises and like it feels really rattly. Um, and the funny thing is, uh, that car actually got discontinued um, not too long after we bought it. So, uh, at the back of my mind was, good morning, Jason, was a feeling that um, I don't ever want to see my family in a car that I don't feel safe in because, you know, it was a miracle that my husband uh, survived that accident and uh, I just couldn't put them in another car like that. But we bought this car, probably through a series of limiting beliefs. Again, we not only do small, we think small. So on my 40th birthday, I took the small tin can in for a service, purely with the intention of getting it serviced. What was I doing taking a car in on my birthday? Maybe that's a limiting belief as well. Uh, so took the car in and... Um, I'd been doing a lot of thinking prior to this about um, the car, car of my choice, the Hyundai i30. I, I do really like Hyundai i30s. I've been doing research. I've been thinking about it. I've been looking at the shape. I've been looking at the features that had come out. We don't tend to buy new cars. We only ever buy secondhand cars. Uh, but this particular model that came out brand new um, had quite a lot of features that I thought this is this is a safe car. Um, my husband and I spent at the time a lot of time on the road, a lot of time on the road. Uh, and other than fuel efficiency, I was looking at things like, you know, a GPS system um, that didn't mean we have to have our phones. Anyway, all, a bunch of that thinking was already going on. Now, when I took the tin can in for a service, lo and behold, on display was the Hyundai i30 that I'd been looking at. Uh, it was a pretty good deal at the time and um, when I dropped the tin can off for service I then went to look at the new model of the uh, i30 and at the back of my head thought I'm gonna get this car today. <laughs> I'm gonna get this car today. And I went over, looked at it, blah, 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 blah. You know, I already knew in my head, like 99% was going to buy that car today. Drive it home, leave the tin can, right? Leave the tin can behind. Um, and of course, um, I'm in business. I'm not going to pay you the price that you ask for, Mr. Car Dealer. Um, so we were playing, you know, this game of, oh, oh, I don't know, mm, oh, I have to think about this one, you know, I'll, I'll drop the car off and then I'll just go for a walk and, you know, and when I come back, we'll see, you know, whether or not, right? So I'm doing this and then the car salesman says to me, oh, do you need to go home and, and ask your husband about this? I'm no feminist, um, <laughs> but I just thought that's a bit weird. Um, why would I need to do that? <laughs> I could, I mean, I could give him a call if I really wanted to. I could give him a call, um, and I realized that 
you know, at that moment, I started to doubt myself. I thought, oh, maybe this is a really dumb idea. Maybe I don't know anything about cars. Maybe I should, you know, actually really get Josh down to look under the hood, who probably knows about as much as I do because I like gadgets. I spend a lot of time reading about uh, specifications and technicalities in things that I'm interested in. And I read a lot about this car. And I almost walked away. And you know what? I know that if I had walked away and gone home, I would have lived in that limiting belief of saying, what are you doing? Like, why are you buying this car? Just forget it already. Um, however, the story finishes with me um, going with my convictions, which is I knew that um, I just didn't feel safe with my family being in that little car. I wanted something better and I bought the car on the day. Never ever done that before. Bought a new car, bought a car on the day. I have since done that again. <laughs> now, fast forward, the ironic thing was um, the new car became my car. Um, Josh didn't drive this particular car. It became my car. I drove it everywhere. And I was involved in quite a bad car accident. Um, quite a bad car accident about two years after buying the car. And by the grace of God, I was not hurt. That that accident was like, like really bizarre. Um, it was like I was in slow motion. And I think God gave me the ability to make a bunch of decisions that uh, protected the other driver's life and protected my life as well. It was like the accident was happening in slow motion and I could make these decisions of how I was going to steer and how I was going to position the car so that the impact was not on me. It missed me. Right? It went, it went there. Um, and <laughs> when it was taken to the shop, you know, uh, to be repaired and things like that, there was like all this stuff of, oh my gosh, what happened to this car? It's probably going to be a write-off, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I think because it was a new car, because it is a pretty sturdy car, because of a bunch of things, um, you know, I don't think the tin can would have survived. I don't know if I probably would have spun around a few times and flipped over as well. Um, so it was a pretty good a pretty good decision, a pretty good thing to have had. And I just remember when in the series of micro steps, when the car was coming towards me um, and God gave me, I don't know, some kind of time slow motion um, in my head was a series of decisions and thoughts. Where are my kids right now? They weren't in the car, right? So I allowed the, the, the impact was able to go behind me because my kids weren't in the car. But, you know, limiting beliefs, um, who's to know how the stories actually unfold? If we listen to other people's voices, if we listen, if we look at uh, ourselves in the way that other people look at us, if we don't listen to our core convictions, if we don't listen to, you know, if we don't attend to the series of um, whys and, 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 and what what's important to us. If we just keep ourselves in a small box because we embrace what other people think of us, then we also don't fulfill um, the, the, the flow on or the consequences of, of who we are, right? So what I mean is that in buying that car, it was flowing on from a natural conviction of, I just didn't want to see my family in a tin can. And of course, you fast forward, that was probably a really good decision because um, when we had another accident, uh, you know, it was it was in a much better car, much sturdier car as well. Um, I've recently been thinking about this, how limiting beliefs don't just keep us from doing big things. They also keep us in boxes that we don't belong in. Um, the more one of the more common ones that I hear is uh, the belief that you are boring or the belief that you're dumb or the belief that um, you're no risk taker or the belief that uh, you're not strong. You know, these are all limiting beliefs that we have of ourselves because that's how other people have chosen to view us, probably because they have limiting beliefs of themselves. You know, people who tell you that they're boring probably believe that they're boring and so they got to keep you in a box so that they feel good or people who tell you that you're not clever enough probably have that belief for themselves and so they've got to keep you in that box so that they can be the cleverer one in the room right something to think about what limiting beliefs might you have that are keeping you in a box and you spend all that time trying to conserve your energy and your oxygen to stay in that box and it's actually doing a burn and churn of yourself i wonder what that, those might be for you have a good morning